Good morning, and you're welcome to The Breakfast on PLUS TV Africa. My name is Rume Paulson. And my name is Nyamgul Agaji. Welcome to a very, very wonderful day. It's another uh, th 14th day. The 13th day. 13th. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Half a century is not a small thing. The 13th mm -hmm. day of August 2024. 20, uh, we, yeah. We're so thankful that we are alive till today, no matter the challenges. Mm -hmm. We are going to surmount them and emerge victorious. Amen to that. Mm. All right, on today's breakfast, you'll be looking at several hot topics, one of which I will impersonate in deputy governor that is being said by the Edo State Government. Another is bombing of app secretariat, a threat to democracy that is being said by IPAC. We'll also be taking global stories that made it to our national dailies this morning, as well as some top trending stories. But first, let's check out our quote of the day. The art challenges the technology, and the technology inspires the art. And that is by John Lasseta, who was a director. And he says this morning, the art challenges the technology, and the technology inspires the art. Quite explanatory. <laughs> OK, well, well, what I understand from that is uh, uh, the imagination of, of the arts world is, is what inspires technology it makes technology sit up to say you know what this thing that we have seen in 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 this novel in mm. this uh, po poem in these whatever mm. it is mm. uh, let's see how we can make it work mm. i'm sure there was some write-up about people who flew before airplanes were invented mm. uh, there, there were some people who used cell phones before cell phones were mm -hmm. uh, invented and all those ones things that appear to be abstract in the art world mm -hmm. are translated into the practical in the technological world yeah. and the art keeps evolving so that technology can keep pace and technology keeps <laughs> keeping Evolve. pace with the mm -hmm. um with the art world I think so they work it's, hand it's, in hand. yes it's symbiotic yeah. you give me this your imagination i translate into the practical world mm -hmm. and all that so yeah i think like movies in the past um they used to have these slim phones and as of that time they mm -hmm. were like telephone boxes yes. but you see these mobile phones that are being used and you're wondering how mm -hmm. but look at today where are we technology ha has been able to do that and I can only imagine what the next few years is going to be, what we're going to do with technology. And of course, it's always going to get its inspiration from art. And the same way um, art is going, because most movies now, they're using technology, your yeah. cameras, everything you're using right now, mm -hmm. even having to stream. It seems like it was impossible before, like you needed to have an antenna mm -hmm. and set the antenna properly, yeah. you know, in your house. Yeah. And you say, is it showing? Is, is it, it showing? <laughs> you, do you understand? I remember but that. now, look at that. Look at how we have um, technology at our fingertips and the things that we can do with it. So it's always going to inspire the arts. The art is always going to challenge, challenge technology that we want more. Yeah. Do something more yeah. so that we can keep, you know, getting better as I well. Just imagine this thing. Can it be, be done? You just imagine it and leave it there. And technology mm. will, will now we'll run get with the it. challenge and Look say, okay, let's try to do it. Yeah. I, I read novels in the 80s that uh, things were just uh, funny. Um, because they seemed like they, they were never going to be real. Mm. Today, it seemed like uh, <laughs> those are backward technologies even mm -hmm. that have happened. So yeah. it's, it's a good thing that there's imagination, there's creativity, uh, having this very good relationship and bringing us to where we are. All right. Let's move over to our top trending stories. The first one says, local government chairman, councillors to enjoy four-year tenure, and that is by the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court of Nigeria has mandated a four-year tenure for all local government chairmen and councillors aligning their terms with those of local government executives. Justice Mohamed Garba criticized states for undermining local government autonomy, leading to a failure in performing constitutional duties. The ruling underscores that local governments should have political and financial independence as guaranteed by the Constitution. The decision aims to prevent the illegal truncation of elected officials' terms and ensure adherence to constitutional provisions for local government governance. 
Your take, please. Well, four years. If it's three th tiers of government and they say uh, we should all be thinking about um, equality or fairness or something, mm -hmm. if the president is taking four years, the governor four years, why not the local government well, chairman and, and uh, councillors yeah. take four years? So, And I think it would even help with knowing, like, it, it will help with the cycle. So if, um, if they can do it, that everybody starts, mm -hmm. you know, wherever you are, for each state, when you have the state governor, the local government chairman are also appointed and everybody would, you know, round up their cycle at the same time. I'm not sure it will, it will ever happen where the governor and the local government mm. chairman will be elected at the same time. Mm. First of all, INEC, even if it's INEC conducting the, ex, um, the election, they cannot do it at the same time from state to local government. Mm. And even if it is the state that is conducting it, it, they cannot clash. So there will never be a time where that will happen. But mm. I'm glad that at least they're getting their four years. I was wondering why they had to do three years. Mm. Like, uh, you know, it, I think it used to be four years or something. Yeah, Maybe I didn't used, remember I think well. it used to uh, be. So now yeah. it changed to three years and now it's back to four years. So I'm, I'm glad. Yeah. I'm glad. I think that's the way to go because if we're even talking about autonomy, then it should be in all, in all areas, things. yeah. All it shouldn't and just be some parts. And for three years, it was like, okay, let me install my boy, empower him for three years, and, mm -hmm. and you'll be loyal so much so that you're thinking that, okay, after these three years, I should be aspiring for something better. Mm -hmm. So let me be loyal enough and let my Oga do whatever yes, he wants. Maybe but I if can you go have to the four years, House of Reps or become a senator mm -hmm. or something. So now you know you have four years. Even if your political career ends there, you think you, you will make you an want impact. To, yes, you want to make an impact yes. you know, in your community. Mm -hmm. um, all right. Okay, so police trail Sudan crisis linked suspect to Labor House. That is according to the Inspector General of Police, Kayode Ebek Tokun, who revealed that a suspect linked to the Sudan crisis was traced to a shop within the Nigerian Labor Congress building though the raid was not targeted at the NLC leadership. Uh, Egberto Kuhn emphasized that the police's role is to manage protest, not protest themselves, and express concerns about protests mobilized via social media, citing the potential for violence. The IG mentioned that the police are undertaking uh, farm patrols in the Northeast to boost farmer confidence and address the complex security economic challenges in Nigeria. Egberto can also address efforts to address corruption within the police, stating that the force reflects broader societal issues, but committing to removing bad elements from the system. When I saw this story yesterday, <clears throat> I chuckled a little bit because I said, is that, is that what it is? I remember the um, NLC leaders coming out to say, you know, their headquarters was, it was invaded. Um, it was, I think it was being said that it was a DSS at the time. Mm -hmm. DSS came out to say, no, we're not the one. <clears throat> and then it was said that it was obviously government officials. So who are these people now? The police is saying that, no, we, we're not targeting you. Mm -hmm. We just, somebody just happened to run into your building. We had to come there. And I heard that there were some vital documents that were being that were taken. taken. Yeah. Maybe so the Sudanese brought them. Brought them. <laughs> so I'm like, I don't know. Hmm. Yeah, because uh, how do you trace somebody to NLC building and then in the course of trying to arrest him, you invade that place? Did they arrest him? Uh, they said that uh, he was even planning to disrupt the peace yes. in Nigeria, yes. not only Sudan. So when did he enter Nigeria? When did he start? Um, uh, Hatching this even, plan. Who stamped his passport? Yes, how did he enter this country in the first place and all that? And you said he went to hide in NLC building or something because I don't understand. If you're seeking asylum in Nigeria, will it be in NLC no, building? No, of course going? not. <laughs> I just, I don't know. Things are not I adding up. I a little because I'm like, I don't know. Something At is not adding up. At the end of the day, he up. threatened us and said that if you know the information we know, you won't even go out on the streets to protest. If you have the information, arrest those people and arrest the whatever the threat might be exactly. before even it gets to the streets and the reason for giving a notice of protest is so that you can you can prevent it if it is possible mm -hmm. and that you've been given uh, notice you said we know some people who are trying to cause trouble in it and you're mm -hmm. not arresting them and even after the protest we've not seen anybody being arrested yeah. as the one who was planning in those days only the people at the protest grounds were arrested yeah you see but and, no brain behind and then this to destroy bullets even when they said they were not shooting uh, anything life, apart yeah, from uh, tear gas but there were three bullets that killed people from the army and possibly from the police so i don't know 
Whatever it something, is, let them tell us. All I'm going to say is something is not adding up. And I feel like at this point, we need to be accountable for our actions. It's just coming out to say this is what has happened. If you need to tender an apology, because I think the NLC was also demanding for an apology. Yeah. If you need to tender an apology, do that and, you know, move on with it. But when you're coming, making several excuses that doesn't add up, I'm like, hmm. But okay. Our final top trending story, youth indispensable partners in achieving national security, and that is being said by the IG of police, Olukaide Egbetokun, who pledged to protect the rights, promote welfare, and support the growth and development of Nigeria youth during Nigerian Police Force Youth Conference, marking International Youth Day 2024. Egbetoko emphasized that youths are crucial in driving social change, redesigning security, and um, you know, the architecture and advancing sustainable development, highlighting their role as indispensable partners in national security. The conference themed Enhancing Nigeria Youth Value for National Security Intelligence was organized in collaboration with UNESCO and aimed to create a platform for dialogue and collaboration between the police and Nigerian youths. Egbe Tokun underscored the importance of harnessing the energy and creativity of young people to build a safer and more prosperous Nigeria, emphasizing the police commitment to supporting and empowering youths as agents of change. Uh, well, I think this is def it's definite, quite definite. There's no way you can say you want to build a nation without the youths because, of course, they have this creativity, they have the... Um, they have the willpower most times, they have the energy, but at the end of the day, you need to also give them things that are incentives that would make them want to work for you or will make them want to even stay. A lot of, yesterday was International Youth Day, but if you look at the numbers of people who are moving away from Nigeria, majority of them are the youths. If you look at people who try not to even work in Nigeria, maybe they even live here, but they're having remote jobs from you know, other countries, most of them are the youths. So if you want to use that to your advantage, if you want to utilize um, the, the resources, the human resources that you have in the nation, then you have to start to look for things to give them incentives for them to stay one and for them to even, you know, work here and do whatever you need. But if you're always going to give them the push factors to make them go away, then you're not really doing All of this is just going to be something that we said that we think it's nice to hear but it's not being implemented. Our parents planted some, some trees that they knew they were not going to live to enjoy because they will start uh, having fruits when they are dead and gone because yeah. some trees last that long. That is what countries do that are thinking of the generation next as it is because you have a plan, a 50-year plan, a 100-year plan. There are countries with over 200-year plans. Yes. Uh, so you're thinking about youths of the youths of the youths of the youths because youths will have children will, mm -hmm. will have children mm -hmm. so great 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 grandchildren you're putting them in your plan everywhere in the youth in the world sorry is youths that bring change yeah. whatever kind of change it is youths that bring independence it is youths that bring even even change of government even if you're talking about a coup which I, i'm not saying i'm saying coup yeah. is coming by but even if you're talking about coup, you think about the people, it's not the generals that plan the coup, mm -hmm. it's the lieutenants and other junior officers mm -hmm. that are younger that plan the coup. So youths are an agent of change. <clears throat> the more you integrate them into the society and integrate them into your policies, the better for your country exactly. because they have the energy, they have, sometimes they have more time than, mm -hmm. than the, the people who uh, are aged, mm -hmm. the <laughs> us that are aged, <laughs> and all that. So. If you, if you have high regard for the youths, your country will flourish. But what programs do we have in Nigeria that cover uh, the youths, per mm. se? The, you will just wait for... for uh, you heard heat development, uh, but really, what, what are they doing? There's, there's really nothing much, if there is anything. Because if you're talking about the youths, you'll have to go with the trend. Exactly. Youths now are talking technology. You, youths are in tech now. Youths are doing business and all that. How much have you made the place so conducive for them mm -hmm. to be able to, to flourish even in their that SMEs. society? Exactly. So it's, it's really, it's really I feel something it's not just something at. you come out to say, oh, we think you should be part of this. What are the measures? What are the policies? What are the things you are putting um, in place for these people? If you want to really have them, if you want to harness you know, all of the potentials that they have, 
it cannot just be sayings. It has to because it sounds like, oh, promises, promises, promises. In fact, even the education you are supposed to give promises. them, you're not giving them. Yeah. So what are you really doing? And there are people that are moving away. It is quite alarming, the amount of people that leave Nigeria every single day. Do you know how many people are in the embassies right now as we speak, queuing up this morning because you're looking for visas to move away? And we're just sitting and doing nothing about it. The economy is crippling. There are so many things that are happening. And if you're saying that you want the youth, because guess what? The old people would leave at some point. It's the youth that would be here to make the nation move forward. If you're saying you want a progressive nation, you cannot have a progressive nation without getting the youths involved. So when the old people die, and that is not a bad thing, you just have to do your time and leave. But <laughs> when the old people die, is the youth that are going to remain? When and the they're the ones that leave the, the scene. Okay, the when scene. they leave the scene. And mm -hmm. they're the ones that are going to instill um, you know, all of these values into the younger yeah. ones. So what are you doing for your youths right now to make sure that in the next 50 years, in the next 100 years, Nigeria is still moving? And I think I always ask this question, what is the Nigerian dream? What is our goal? What is our plan? How, where, do we, where does Nigeria want to be in the next 100 years? I don't know because nobody's saying anything. Instead, it seems like the Nigerian dream is to jackpot. It's unfortunate that even at this point, we have forgotten uh, the labor of our heroes past. Because yeah. that was in our national anthem that yeah. has been jettisoned now. So we're yeah. not talking about what our heroes, the labor of our heroes past was. They, we, we're just there. Singing Nigeria, we hail thee. Mm. We, we want to go back to 1960s and have a reset of our brain. So it's fine. Let us go back. Let's go back to the constitution of 1960. Let us go back to... Um, so that means we're starting from ground zero. <clears throat> yeah. And even at ground zero, we had pipe-borne water. But mm. how many societies, how many states have pipe-borne water sure. offered by the government? So if that's where we have to go, let's go. And start again and just rebuild <laughs> the nation. We See. might as well. Yeah. Might as well. All right. That's it for our top trending stories. We'll go on a short break. We'll look at the weather. When we return, we'll be reviewing the papers. Please stay with us.